My first language that I learned was Norwegian. I went, moved to Norway in high school when I was 18. And there were a lot of people there that could speak some English, so that was fine. That I could always get around. There was no point in time where it was nearly impossible to communicate with somebody. But my papa in Norway didn't speak English. So every other member of the family spoke some amount of English so we could get by. And, but I knew when I first arrived that I wanted to be able to speak to him. So he was the main reason, the main goal that I knew I really wanted to learn Norwegian because I wanted to be able to communicate with him. So my host sister would sit me down every day for about an hour in the afternoon and we'd have a Norwegian lesson because she spoke English really well. And she would teach me, correct my grammar, correct my pronunciation. And I had that for about a month. And then she actually was an exchange student herself and went on to an exchange program in Australia. So then I didn't have my teacher anymore. And that was kind of the end of my summer break in Norway, and I started high school classes. I was a senior in high school, and I'd had probably 15 to 20 hours of working with my sister in Norwegian, and then I started taking all my classes, and they were in Norwegian. So I would go to the library, get dictionaries, ask questions, because I was just kind of thrown into it. It was, a com I had no knowledge of Norwegian before I arrived, and I had to survive in all my high school classes. And I did, I did okay, even as a second language learner. I got, was able to get C's and B's on my tests, and, um, but I was just kind of thrown into it, was how I learned it. And I knew that there, I wanted to speak to my papa, so that was a big driving force in keeping me focused on the goal of, of learning how to speak Norwegian. Uh, it was really, really difficult. And probably the biggest coping mechanism was to spend time with family and friends. The, uh, when they had the funeral in Weaverville, practically the whole town came. They, um, you know, there were thousands of people that came to that. And those people all helped and supported them through it all. I um, decided that those things that I'd wanted to do in my life, I was going to do. So I wouldn't make a decision just because that was the right path. So I wouldn't just... Um, go to college because I was supposed to go to college. I did that because I wanted to. And at the time, one of the things I'd always wanted to do was travel more. So um, Wendy was in South America at the time going to college. And so I wrote a letter to my college and I said, I'm taking some time off. I'm going to take a quarter off and I'm going to fly to South America and travel there for a month because that's a place I've always wanted to see. And so you, you never know when it's going to end. You could be 17, you could be 6, you could be 96. So it doesn't mean do crazy things, but if there's things you think that are important to you, you better do them because you don't know if you're going to have tomorrow to do them. Yeah, I think about that many times, I guess, that I'm not sure this is going to work. I'm not sure I can do this anymore. And then I realize that that's not an option. That's how I got myself through college. That's how I learned Norwegian when I went to Norway. Failure was not an option. So that's, that's kind of that lesson I got when I had to work every single day as well as go to school all day long 
every single day. So in a, in a typical day in college, I worked a full eight hour day and I did a full eight hour day of school and I did my homework. And I could have walked away from that any time and gone and had fun or whatever. But that wasn't an option. I was going to succeed. And that's the way it is when you come against tough situations in your job. Failure's not an option, so you figure out a way to make it work. My name is Teve Aldeco. My name is Jennifer Spitia. My name is Leslie Alcantar.